Here's a more formal definition of an association rule. So an association rule has the general form. You, it, it has a list or a set of items on the left hand side of the rule. So let's say that we have a list of k items, i1 to ik, where k is greater than or equal to 1. And on the right hand side we have a single item which we are calling as j. And what this rule means is that if a basket contains all the items i1 to ik, then it is likely to contain the item j as well. That is, a customer who is purchasing all k of these items is likely to also purchase item j. Now the strength of an association rule can be measured by something called confidence. As I just mentioned in the previous video, it's not necessary that all customers who purchase items i1 to ik will be purchasing item j, but there has to be a strong enough correlation that we can consider this association rule to be uh, useful. So that is something which we are going to measure by a metric called confidence. So the confidence of the association rule measures its strength and it's the probability of purchasing j given that all k of these items are being purchased. Okay, so given, given the fact that i1 to ik are part of a particular basket, what is the probability that j will also be a part of that basket? Now you can, you can come up with a simple formula for the confidence of this association rule if you are given the support of all of the sets of items. Right? So recall that the support of an item set is the number of uh, baskets which contain all the items in that item set. So what is the probability of J being of item j being part of a basket given that all the items in the set i are part of the basket. It's just the probability of, by Bayes' theorem, this is just the probability of j intersection i, let me call this as the singleton set containing the item j, j intersection i give, divided by the probability of i, which can be expressed as the number of transactions in which j was present along with all the other k items divided by the number of transactions in which all these i items or all the items in the set i were purchased. So this just directly follows from the definition, right? Because we are trying to measure among all those transactions that had every item in the set i, how many transactions also had the item j as part of the transaction. Right, so this is a very int intuitive formula. So this is basically the numerator here is the support for the set i union the singleton set j. Right, so this is the support of this set and the denominator is the support of i. So the confidence of an association rule can be calculated if we are given the support of all the items participating in that rule on the left hand side as well as the right hand side divided by the support of uh, all the items on the left hand side of that rule. So even though we are going to be interested in association rules that have a high confidence, we must keep in mind that it's not necessary that all high confidence rules are interesting to us. For example, consider a high confidence rule x 
on the left hand side and milk on the right hand side. Now X can be any arbitrary uh, item set um, that is frequent. So let's say that X could be uh, something like uh, say diapers for example. Now this rule may have high confidence for you know particular choices of the set X but that may not necessarily be because people who tend to purchase X also tend to purchase milk. It may just be because of the fact that milk is a frequently purchased item in general. So no matter what other items a customer is purchasing, it's still very likely that the customer will be purchasing milk. So even if that's the case, even if milk does not depend, even if the purchase of milk is not correlated in any way with the purchase of uh, uh, items in the set X, it's still possible that this association rule can have a high confidence. So how do we distinguish those association rules where the purchase of the item on the right hand side is connected in some way to purchase of items on the left hand side from uh, those rules where this confidence measure may not actually reflect uh, any kind of a causal correlation between purchasing the items on the left hand side and the right hand side. So let's define another metric called the interest of an association rule. The interest of an association rule i to j is the difference between its confidence and the general probability that the basket contains the item on the right hand side. So the interest rule is measuring not just sorry the interest of an association rule is measuring not just the confidence of the association rule but from the confidence we are subtracting out a term which is the probability that the basket contains the item J in general. Now what happens in such a scenario where the purchase of milk does not depend on the purchase of items in the set X. In that case the probability of purchasing milk given that items in the set X were purchased would simply be the probability of the purchase of milk in general right because X and milk the pur or purchasing items in the set X and purchasing milk would be independent would be independent events right and by definition if A and B are independent events then probability of A given B is just the probability of A so knowing that event B has happened does not change the probability that A is going to happen. So if milk, if the purchase of milk was independent of X, then this would be true. But it's possible that the confidence of this rule could still be high just because the probability of purchase of milk on the right hand side is, is, is generally very high because milk is a frequently purchased item. So but if you look at the interest instead of looking at the confidence we to calculate the interest of this rule we will have to take its confidence and subtract from it the general probability of purchasing uh, the item J which in this case is milk. Right? So the interest of this association rule will be the confidence of this rule which will which is basically the probability of purchasing milk given the purchase of items in the set X minus the probability of generally purchasing milk. Now because this probability is the same as the probability of milk the interest of this rule will be zero. So in general rules with a low interest or with a value of interest zero or close to zero are not very interesting. Okay, that's why we call it call this measure as interest because they are not low interest means that they are not interesting. 
which means that the purchase of items on the left hand side and right hand side are more or less independent. So high confidence rules can still may not be interesting. What rules are interesting then? Interesting rules are those where the value of the interest is significantly positive or significantly negative. For example, if it is the case that people who purchase milk and diapers actually tend to buy beer in a store, then the interest for that association rule will be significantly positive. It won't be close to zero, it will be significantly larger than zero. Whereas the converse can also be true. It's possible that the purchase of some item could drastically reduce the probability of the purchase of some other item. For example, if somebody purchases coke at a store, it's very unlikely that this person will purchase Pepsi as part of that same visit to the store. Because, you know, if you're purchasing coke, that means it's, it, you know, you, you want a drink which tastes like coke, which is why you purchase this. So why would you go and purchase Pepsi also? It's very unlikely. Likewise, if somebody purchases Pepsi, it's unlikely that the, that customer's basket is going to also contain coke. So these rules will have a low interest because when when you are given the fact that Pepsi has been purchased, the probability that Coke will be purchased, given that Pepsi will be Pepsi has been purchased, is close to zero. Okay. So the interest for this rule, okay, let's say we're looking at this rule, the interest for this rule is the probability that Coke was purchased given that Pepsi was purchased, right? This is the confidence in the rule, minus the probability that Coke was purchased in general. Now this probability is close to zero, and Coke in general may have, may be a frequent item. Right? That is the set, the singleton set just containing coke may be a frequent item set. So this could be a significantly large probability. And in general for large supermarket stores, a probability of more than 0 0.01 could be a significantly large probability. So the, if an item is purchased more than 1% of the times in all transactions, that's generally considered to be a frequent item set. So this rule will therefore have a negative, significantly negative interest value. So interesting rules can have a high, either a very high positive value or a high negative value. But for the purposes of this lecture, we are just going to focus on high confidence rules. That is, we are going to say that if the items participating in an association rule are frequent item sets, and if the confidence in that rule is high, then we can more or less say that this rule is going to be useful for us, although we know that there could be exceptions of this kind. So here is another example of confidence and interest. Sup suppose uh, Let's go back. Let's say we go back to those eight baskets we saw previously, and let's just focus on this association rule. M comma B goes to C. Those who tend to purchase milk and beer also tend to purchase Coke. What would be the confidence of this rule? The confidence of this rule would be the support of M comma B comma C divided by the support of M comma B. Right? So among all the transactions which had milk and beer, how many how many of those transactions had Coke as well in addition to milk and beer? So how many of these transactions have M, B and C? This one has M, B and C. And this one has M, B and C. So there are two transactions. 
So the numerator is 2. And how many have m and b? Well, these two have m and b because they have m, b and c. So they obviously have m and b. But then there are these other two transactions which also have m and b. And no other transaction has m and b, both. So there are four transactions in total which have m and b both. And so the confidence of this rule is 0.5. What is the interest? The interest would be uh, the confidence, which is 0.5, minus the general probability of purchasing C in any transaction. So how many times does C occur in these eight transactions? It appears five, uh, five times. One, two, three, four, and five. So there are five out of eight transactions in which C occurs. So the probability of C occurring in general is five by eight. So if we subtract five by eight from the confidence in this rule, we get one by eight, which is a very low uh, interest value. So this rule is not very interesting. Now I did say that an item set that appears more than 1% of the times is considered a frequent item set. But in this toy example, with where we just have eight transactions, obviously this is an artificial, uh, artificially constructed example. And so uh, in for this particular example, frequent item sets are, as we had defined earlier, uh, item sets which have a support of greater than or equal to three. So 3 divided by 8 is much larger than 1%. Right? 3 out of 8 is significantly larger than 1%. So uh, that's just for the purpose of this toy example. In real stores, we are going to have a much lower value of the support threshold. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because in the previous example, I mentioned that this particular rule has a low, significantly negative interest value, whereas this value was close to 0, and this value was larger than 0 0.01 for a real store. So you may imagine that this difference is not going to be very different from zero. It will be negative, but maybe not significantly negative compared to the kind of values we are looking at here. We are calling this as a low interest, even though this is 0 0.125. But that's because this example was based on a real store, whereas this is a toy example where the values are going to be inflated. So I don't want you to be confused uh, as to why I'm calling this a low interest.